two. And you're ready. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome everyone to our Small Business Faith Forum. This is our third annual event and we are so delighted that you could come and be with us today. We're so excited about the event we have planned for you. We know that small business ownership is challenging to say the least. And so we have built pull together resources and small business owners who have already done it to inspire you and encourage you in your small business journey. We have faith leaders uh, from the three largest religions in the world to talk to you today and encourage you. So we're delighted you're here. My name is Althea Harris and I'm the Deputy District Director in the South Florida District Office of the U.S. Small Business Administration. And we are also delighted to let you know that we are 70 years old and going strong. And they, we have grown over these 70 years into a modern agency that has everything you need to be successful in your entrepreneurial journey. So today we're gonna talk about SBA's programs and resources for you. You're going to hear that inspirational and encouraging message about the future from local faith leaders, and you're going to hear entrepreneurs share their journeys of success. A few housekeeping items. We will be taking questions at the end, so please listen up and write your questions in the chat, and we will methodically go by one by one and answer them for you. Right now, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the Regional Administrator um, from Region 5, which is the Great Lakes area. Jerry Aglipai is here to talk to you about the marvelous things that we're doing at SBA. We are delighted that you could be with us, Madam Administrator. Please take it away. Good morning, everybody. Um, I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for joining us for this uh, forum and this presentation and really listening interactive session for you to understand what the SBA is and the resources that we have to offer. Um, SBA, as you heard Althea, who is the Deputy District Director, uh, say we are celebrating our 70th anniversary this year since being founded in 1953. So happy birthday to SBA. You know, when President Eisenhower established the SBA in the aftermath following the uh, World War II and a Great Depression because he knew that small business ownership is a way to build wealth and to create jobs. 70 years we've been supporting small business owner with free resources, affordable capital, social capital as well. Small business ownership is actually the next best way to building wealth in this country next to owning a home in America. And I'm so pleased to be here. It's funny, the other day I was in church and the priest started to give his homily. And he started talking about the lottery and the mega millions. And behind me, two gentlemen were saying, oh, I think I won. But that we were talking about that in the, but the lottery that he was saying, regards to where do we actually create our value in society by building wealth, winning that million dollars or trillion dollars, whatever it is, there's another way. And that's with SBA, the United States Small Business Administration. We are the only federal agency solely dedicated to small business ownership. From starting a business, to growing a business, to scaling a business, to even pivoting and recovering your business from disasters. Starting a business also means business acquisition. It isn't just starting from scratch, which is one way to have start a business, but it's also business acquisition. There's thousands of businesses out there that are legacy businesses. And SBA has just honored legacy business, and we are continuing to honor them for 70 years across the country. So many of them are legacy businesses that are ready to transition. Mergers and acquisition, buying a business, the SBA can also help you with that. We have affordable capital with microloans, with also lines of credit, 
making sure that we also incentivize and work with our lending partners to make sure that they lend most especially to underserved areas and those that are socioeconomically disadvantaged regions as well. This includes rural areas, micropolitan areas, metropolitan areas too. We're here to level the field and under President Biden, equity has been a priority from day one. With Administrator Guzman, the United States Small Business Administration has its first ever equity action plan, which holds us accountable and transparent with transparency as to how well we are actually doing to making sure that we level the field and reaching those populations who otherwise may not have the privileges to access the knowledge capital, social capital, intellectual capital as well to build their business. And we do that by reaching in the field with folks like Althea and the entire Office of Field Operations in SBA to make sure we're reaching out to populations and engaging them with the SBA with our free, no cost, confidential assistance and business advising with mentorship programs, with programs to scale your business if you're ready to grow into the lower middle market areas of $1 million or more, thereby creating more jobs. Job creation creates income security, but it also addresses the unemployment gaps that are so prolific in so many socioeconomically disadvantaged communities as well. With our partners in the field, such as the faith communities with the churches, the mosques, the um, and also the uh, institutes that we have as well with our rabbis, with the priests, with the deacons. We are reaching out to make sure that we reach these communities where they are at. Under Administrator Guzman, meeting people where they're at means meeting them in their daily lives where they worship as well. And working with the faith communities, we're so excited to actually be moving SBA for post-pandemic recovery into a phase where we're amplifying our partnerships with so many partners, innovative partnerships such as the faith communities to make sure there's nobody left behind. We saw with the pandemic that there was a challenge for so many to get the assistance they need, but it was also with the faith communities that we were able to reach more individuals to get assistance to support their businesses. As I said, owning a small business is the next best way to building wealth next to owning a home in this country. And with Administrator Guzman's leadership and under President Biden's priority for equity, which he has had from day one, we are leaning into that and continuing the legacy from when President Eisenhower established the SBA, which is to aid, counsel, assist, and protect. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. What a packed few, few minutes you just gave us. And I wanted to emphasize that you talked about equity and how important that is. The, uh, the equity efforts uh, at SBA and within uh, the federal government to ensure that everyone is included. And that's why we're doing this faith forum to make sure that people of faith have access, the same access to our programs and services that can make the difference in their small business ownership. So thank you so much, uh, Madam Administrator, for being with us today and uh, giving us that great overview of the many ways and the many segments of small businesses that we can help. And now, if we can, I'd like to turn our attention to Ron Spencer in the Office of Faith-Based <clears throat> and community initiatives. And I've been at SBA for so long. I remember when George W. Bush elevated faith communities and uh, core community organizations to a higher level and even created the offices of faith and community-based initiatives within federal agencies, and I had the great joy in 2001 of being assigned this initiative, and <clears throat> it is so great that 23 years later, we still in government care about faith communities. And so, Ron, would you share a few words with us? Yes, absolutely, and good morning to everyone, and, and thank, thank you, Athea, and also thank the team that 
put this together. This is a very exciting. I really can feel the energy as we for, as we get started here. But as uh, Althea mentioned, my name is Ron Spencer. I, I am also uh, part of my responsibilities include focusing on the underserved markets. But before I get into that, I'd like to add something uh, to talk about our, our 70 years of existence. And I know the ministers can and faith leaders can attest to this. It's three score and seven. So that puts us at at, at 70 years of age. So I thought I would, would add that. But getting back to more specifics about the office of uh, the White House uh, uh, Office of Faith Base um, and Community P Neighborhood Partnerships is it's focused a lot on the underserved uh, markets and how do we get those folks that uh, to the table that have been on the sideline for so many years. So the equity, as was mentioned, uh, initiative along with the uh, leveling the playing field gives those businesses aspiring businesses and entrepreneurs a chance to step up and see what's available for them. And I call it the whole of the government. But the White House Office of Faith Based is led by Melissa Rogers. She's the executive director and senior director for faith and public policy in the White House. And she was also under the Obama administration in 2013 and 2017. Uh, this came about, as Althea mentioned, under uh, Bush II, President Bush II, and it's morphed into, it's been a continuation really of what's needed, what's expected, and what, what we should be doing to help the underserved markets. The White House Office of Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnership has a mission. They're focused on working with civil society partners, uh, much like the folks that are on this call, on this uh, program today. They address the post-COVID-19 pandemic and boost economic recovery economic being the buzzword and the keyword that drives these initiatives. It's also set up to combat systemic racism. Uh, the Partnerships Office works closely with organizations and community leaders, such as those, again, that's on this uh, part of this program today, to tackle some of the systemic race, racism and, and all other forms of biases. And so with that, we will continue uh, as a SBA office and our 68 field offices, uh, we have what we call and we've started uh, SBA visiting the churches on Sunday. And what that has done for us, we've done three of those so far and the interest and and the receptiveness of those visits has been unbelievable. And it gives us a chance at the grassroots level to touch many of those small business owners that don't have a seat at the table and trying to maneuver their way through the government uh, rules and regulations to get to the table to get to the resources that are available to them. So I'm looking forward to an exciting program. Again, this is uh, very creative thinking uh, and the vision for the three uh, the teams to put this together and collectively at the end of the day, there will be some value. I know there'll be some value to the folks that are listening in. So with that out there, I would turn it back over to you and thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you, Ron, for being with us and picking up the mantle. Thank you, Ron, for picking up the mantle uh, of the Office of Faith-Based and Community Initiatives. I know that uh, with your help, these communities are going to thrive with the help that they can get from SBA. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce you to my regional administrator, Alan Thomas is from uh, the regional administrator from the great region for the Southeast, truly the workhorse of the SBA. We have so many achievements in this uh, region. And I, if I may break my arm patting myself on the back, uh, the South Florida District Office is the workhorse of region four. So much happening, so much happening at the SBA uh, and emanating from Region 4. Thank you, Alan Thomas, uh, for being with us. I know you are a man of faith and you are a small business owner. Take it away, would you? Morning. Good morning, everybody. Can you, can you see my smiling face? Are we good? All right. So uh, I, I love how humble Althea is. <laughs> 
we we love Althea and her spirit shines and it really uh, when we do events um, it's just so great to work with good people and that's so special you guys know this um, it doesn't matter where you go in life um, you know how does your spirit shine that's what really really makes a difference and people can tell authenticity they can tell what you're really about and um for full disclosure uh i did uh my mom is an ordained minister i did grow up on the uh, on a church bus so i ain't even gonna try to pretend they had a um they had a gospel group we're pentecostal holiness and um and so i literally grew up um on on uh camp, camp meetings and wednesday night church services so i'm not even gonna try to pretend uh but it is an honor uh extreme uh it, definitely a privilege uh, to have this White House appointed opportunity to represent the Southeast United States. My offices are in Atlanta. Again, I'm Alan Thomas, the regional administrator for the Southeast U.S. I am a native of North Carolina and where uh, my wife and I raise our, our three kids. But but let me tell you, if you ain't seen me yet, you will. And I think as my district directors will uh, witness uh, my office is really at about 32,000 feet because I'm from Kentucky to Tennessee, uh, across the Carolinas, down to the Mississippi River and Alabama and Georgia and Florida, everywhere. It is such an honor to be in this role. But I love this opportunity to come to speak with you today because it is so special. It is something that is such a natural and intuitive relationship. Um, I can't speak for everybody, but the circle of communities that I grew up uh, the church was always the center of that circle. It was a trusted friendship. Um, it was where many people came to learn to distinguish between fact and fiction and 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 how to continue to work together in their communities. And that's why SBA, I feel, is such a natural communicative fit. It's not just about mind, body, and soul, and how do you handle your treasure. It's also how do you handle and deal with disasters. And I'm sure others will get into this in the session here today, but SBA touches all of that. And I like to say we're the smallest big agency in federal government. Where we lack in the number of uh, actual FTE employees with, with SBA, we touch billions. We're the gatekeeper, as you know, through COVID, the COVID response and all that was happening there. And uh, we touch so much in every corner of every community. That's why um, I'm honored to, to be in this role. And and look, um, let's get down to it. I'm, I'm, I'm honored to work for uh, the Biden Harris administration, but Isabel Guzman, who is our administrator, and you call her the cabinet secretary with SBA, she gets it. And that's why I'm so excited to work with her. Uh, she says, meet our entrepreneurs and our communities where they are. And that's where this uh, faith engagement is so important with the mission of our shared mission of improving and uplifting our communities and bringing hope and opportunity and faith. There's no reason we should ever shy away from any of those topics. And um, we all know there are barriers and, and we're on a mission to knock down those barriers, but we must do it together. SBA can't do it alone. No denomination or no, or no church community can do it alone. We must work together to get the best information, to put it in the hands of those that trust us and, and, and help them on their path forward to be able to do uh, great things. So what is SBA about? It's been quite a year, especially in our region. As, as, uh, as Althea was saying, patting ourselves on the back a little bit. Um, in FY22, SBA backed over 9,000 loans um, in the Southeast region. And those of you who don't know, obviously, SBA is all about working with banking and backing banking uh, to get you access to capital. And that capital could be anything from $500 to $5 million. It depends on what you need. You could be like me a few years ago. I walked in with an idea on a napkin back in the 90s and walked out with a business and launched a company. So I, I don't just talk SBA. I've lived it. Um, we uh, grew a small te healthcare technology company out of my extra bedroom, and we went from uh, one client back in 1998, 99 to over 160 uh, medical clients, health healthcare clients in 36 states. So seeing is believing. I know what SBA can do. I know what SBDC, what the SCORE chapters, the Women's Business Centers, our Veterans Outreach Programs. But it's so awesome to have this opportunity here to, to bring all that together because uh, what i like to talk about with my three kids um there's so much happening around us in this digital age uh, um, i like to say that we're drowning in information 
but we're starving for knowledge. That is what this is all about. How do we separate the noise from knowledge? Um, and the other thing we like to talk about is so many times we get information and we move too quickly and we want to make sure that you're properly prepared to take advantage of it. And that's what's so key. The first two years of the Biden-Harris administration, SBA, uh, with crucial reforms, helped deliver $43 billion to our lending and investment programs. And finally, began to reverse a 10-year decline in small dollar lending, which is so important. Not everyone needs $5 million. If you want to open up uh, you know, a barbershop or a, a whatever, lawn care or cybersecurity, whatever you need, get the first of all, you go talk to an SBDC or go talk to SBA. So they'll help you uh, truth proof. I call it truth proofing your business model. That is something that'll work. And then make sure when you walk into that bank or, or to that local lender uh, that you already know the answer. Now it's just competing for dollars and opportunity. So in 2023, there's a lot of things happening with SBA. Uh, you know, we expanded the Community uh, Advantage Program, which is a key program that enables lenders to increase their lending to small and disadvantaged businesses. Uh, in 2023, now we are leveraging the expanded footprint that we grew this past year with the American Rescue Plan to help ensure capital and revenue opportunities better reach our entrepreneurs. During the pandemic, we also had what are called fintechs, which aren't brick and mortar banking uh, options, but uh, online banking banking options that stepped up and helped us fill that gap. As you know, there are 35 million businesses across this country. We almost touched them all during the pandemic, helping those could get to the other side. Um, we're not perfect. We did. We continue to work to, to, to perfect that system in terms of how we reach outreach. But those fintechs stepped up and helped fill the gap where banks did not. Uh, traditional banking did not in such a regard. So we're excited as that is a new element of what we provide uh, financing opportunities for with SBA to expand competition is good. So we're creating more access for uh, minority communities, women, and rural entrepreneurs to have access to these resources. This month, uh, uh, SBA also began implementing additional policies aimed at expanding uh, uh, access to capital by modernizing SBA's signature loan programs. Uh, SBA is providing additional flexibility and credit criteria for loans under 500000 to reach more to creditworthy small businesses that just aren't getting the opportunity. We also streamlined our application processes, and that's a big deal. Sometimes it can seem overwhelming. You know, that's all we've got to help work with you directly with the Faith Forum uh, opportunity to how to get past those barriers. And don't let that stand in between your way and your dream of opportunity for your friends and family and community. Uh, we want to make it easier for both lenders and businesses to apply and to qualify for SBA loans. And as we mentioned on the disaster side, the agency just uh, finalized a rule to increase support uh, to, to disaster survivors and small businesses needing relief. Uh, when federally declared disasters uh, happen. My first week on the job back in 2021, we had 25 tornadoes in, this, in December in the states of Tennessee and Kentucky. And it has been amazing to watch. Um, and SBA is just a part of that. I think people need to understand we're not the same one source solution. We're part of an ecosystem of solutions, which I think is always important to communicate. I'm a former three-term mayor. I'm an entrepreneur. So I know uh, you can't print money all the time. You got to be able to partner and collaborate. So when those tornadoes hit Tennessee and Kentucky, the community came together from across uh, the entire nation to uplift those families and businesses. And many times people that thought they had insurance, guess what? They did not. Or they lost all their paperwork, you know, in the storm. So we always say come in and learn how to get digital ready. Learn how to get financial ready with SBDC or with SBA. We can come into the... Uh, you know, into the church community and, and have these seminars in plain language and explain, do A, B, and C, and then you're covered in terms of a disaster if a hurricane or something happens. Do A, B, and C, and we can get you financing to launch a business. And I also like to say, we try to leave people better than we found them when it comes to the disaster scenario. I know, for example, in Kentucky, not only uh, people that didn't have insurance that thought they did or actually will come in and just cover you until you get your insurance claim cleared later. But we even built safe rooms now in these homes and businesses, which is even better than we found these families in these businesses. So they feel peace of mind to be back in those communities, be in safer structures going forward, you know, in, into the future. So, hey, we're all about helping to get you funding when, uh, when things happen for, for residences, personal property.
landscaping, other benefits, whatever you need uh, in all in all situations. And just because you were helped with PPP, that doesn't exclude you from other help in what you may need. So uh, in quick conclusion, I just want to say um, if you want to learn about government contracting opportunities, which are phenomenal, uh, special programs like the ADA program that SBA provides for, for people of color uh, who have, have been disproportionately marginalized for so long that can give you potentially sole source government contracting opportunities and other things. Let's do this together. So conclusion, the role of the church in supporting entrepreneurs can't be underestimated. We're all entrepreneurs. We know how that works from fostering a sense of community, uh, instilling ethical values and promoting collaboration and mindfulness. Uh, our places of worth are a wealth of benefit and a wealth of knowledge, and we must navigate this crazy world that we live in together. So again, my name is Alan Thomas. I'm the regional administrator in the Southeast US. If I can ever come there and be in person, I will. Uh, I don't mind one bit. Uh, I love you guys. If we can help in any way, let me know. My email is allen.thomas, which is A-L-L-E-N, allen.thomas at sba.gov if I can ever help. So bless you guys. Thank you so much. And Althea, it's an honor to, and, and Ron, honored to be uh, on, the, on the seminar here today. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being with us and sharing all of that um, Great news about what SBA has been doing and the data that supports our claims uh, about our awesomeness. And I, you know, one of the things I heard you say is you can't do it alone. Can't do it alone. So no. small business ownership is one of the hardest things anyone will ever do. So don't do it alone. Join our community of uh, resource partners, which you'll hear about soon. But before that, I want to introduce you all now to Imam, I hope I get this right, Imran Malik Awan. He joins us by telephone right now, and he knows about adversity and overcoming it. And one of the things that he has said that you balance hatred and condemnation with love and affection. It is the only way. Imam, we're grateful for you being here today. Please share with us your words of wisdom. Thank you, everyone. And assalamu alaikum and peace be with you all. I apologize. I was having some technical difficulties, so just joined a little late, but uh, better late than never. Thank you for all the words of wisdom that uh, the leadership team has shared so far. And thank you for allowing uh, me this opportunity to speak a little bit on behalf of the Muslim community in Central Ohio and beyond, and then also talking about the other opportunities in which we can work together. As uh, you know, Alan mentioned, uh, we cannot do this uh, uh, singly. We all have to put our collective efforts together when it comes to building the community and building strong, safer neighborhoods and societies, not only in one region and one system but the entirety of our nation so thank you for uh, again uh, giving me this opportunity of listening to me i just want to actually start with the a little bit of uh, the description of uh, our own community uh, of muslim uh, you know uh, faith based in uh, central ohio uh, we are about 10 to 15 percent of uh, the total greater columbus area's population which is over a million right now uh, with somali community being the uh, largest uh, component of our, our footprint in uh, central ohio uh, Columbus happens to be the second largest hub for Somali community in central Ohio. Uh, then other components of uh, the Muslim community, which are Middle Eastern, Asian, Far East Asian, South Americans, and Europeans. Uh, and uh, again, other uh, ethnic groups, they also constitute about 40 to 45,000 uh, for Muslims in, in this uh, demographic uh, representation. Again, uh, Islam is a very uh, strong component of building communities and the fundamental aspect of the community is uh, uh, around the values and the uh, principles of having strong family presence. Uh, we, uh, just like uh, Christianity and Judaism as our counterparts, we are strong uh, believers in that, uh, you know, uh, family value system 
because uh, if we have solid families and solid communities, then definitely, you know, our economical structure, our, our security structure is also stronger. Uh, COVID has actually taught us a lesson that uh, we can definitely be isolated. We can live in isolation, but uh, our, our human nature or our creature of habit nature, nature is that we have to associate, we have to relate. Uh, Islam actually, uh, you know, promotes heavily on the responsibilities of community and it kind of cascades outward from the family, kinship, uh, into neighborhood, into friendship, into community, into building business. And it's all about, you know, obeying the law uh, of the land and also working with communities, whether uh, internally or externally with communities at large to bring value system. And one of the value system is uh, through the entrepreneurship, through building, you know, uh, opportunities, not only for one's own self, but also for collective communal uh, performance as well. Uh, Islam is an advocate that promotes uh, heavily to look into the marginalized community and help them lift themselves, both financially through the rich, uh, practice of faith rituals, as well as like, uh, you know, the social attributes of caring for each other. Uh, Islam always, just like Christianity and Judaism, uh, is of the mindset uh, that that, you know, think global, but act local, because at the end of the day, it's the local associations, it's the local affiliations, it's the local working together that really brings the strong connection of uh, stronger communities, whether it's, it's this social bonding or whether it's economical uh, structuring that can move us forward stronger together. So having said that, uh, you know, as, as Alan mentioned and other members have also mentioned, and I'm sure like other faith community representation who are part of this uh, conversation here today, I'm really looking forward to hearing from uh, aspect as well. Personally, myself, I am a small business owner as well uh, into commercial real estate, so I definitely have utilized the opportunity of SBA, uh, you know, uh, loans as well as, you know, other uh, guidances and uh, workshop, but I do believe that there's a lot more that we can do and take this messaging and take these opportunities that are available both at federal, uh, state, and uh, you know local level to to our constituents as well. Uh, New Islamic Culture Center, that what what I'm part of, it's one of the uh, third largest Islamic center in the Central Ohio. We have about 67,000 people on our mailing list uh, as our congregant members, and we are ex consistently uh, expanding. We have 40 different ethnicities that make up our composition of uh, our community and our congregation. And with that said, uh, we do come across opportunities of, you know, new immigrants, new, uh, new, new, new Americans coming to the community, as well as existing first, second and third generation Muslims in Central Ohio who are entrepreneurs, who are professors, who are teachers, who are into small businesses or services, as well as product development and manufacturing as well. Uh, just, uh, just to kind of give a rough demograph of what the Muslim community contributes, uh, the 75 or 85,000 Somalis in Central Ohio contribute to about 15 million million dollar economical cycle or revenue generation for the city of Columbus every year. This was a study that was done back in 2016 and 17 by the mayor's office. There are, let alone just the Palestinian community in the Muslim demographic have at least 700 plus businesses anywhere from convenience stores to like in you know, a small manufacturing uh, services. Then you talk about the Asian Muslims, you know, they contribute into like uh, solo practices of medicine, of law, and many other uh, you know, white collar, uh, you know, development of IT, uh, you know, softwares and hardware uh, services within Central Ohio. So there's a lot of entrepreneurship that happens and that uh, within the Muslim community. And as far as the, the world population, there are 8 billion people at the beginning of this world and about roughly 2 billion people are Muslims stretching all the way from uh, Morocco and North uh, Africa all the way down to the far stretches of Indonesia and Malaysia. There are about 50 countries and 2 billion Muslims. So every fourth person in the world is basically associated with the faith of Muslim, uh, you know, tradition. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, you know, the American Muslim population and footprint overall is about 1% of the total population, uh, making it about 3 to 4 million Muslims in, 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 in our great United States of America. And with that said, like, you know, most of the Muslims are into professional uh, jobs and services, and then also a heavy uh, number of them exist uh, into the entrepreneurship world as well. So I think it's a uh, no reason why we should not be able to take the messaging and the opportunities that SBA is offering into, uh, you know, the Muslim community as well at the grassroots level, and then you know, make benefiting our societies together. Uh, because when we uh, invest into our communities financially as well as emotionally, uh, we are basically, you know, not only improving our living standards but 
also elevating standards of community around us. And you know that is uh, you know God's uh, you know commandment. Uh, I, I do believe that uh, all monotheistic faith traditions, other Judaism, and Christianity, Islam, or even Hinduism and uh, Sikhism. The core value of all the faith traditions is love and service to others. And uh, there's a very important saying. I would like to leave that uh, with everyone here uh, Prophet, uh, of Prophet Muhammad is that uh, the best human being is the one who is beneficial to the other. He did not say that the best a Muslim is the one. He said the best human being is the one who is most beneficial to the others. And that is the motto. That is the living and breathing essence of Islam, uh, Islam speaking, and that the Muslims in, in general practices of daily rituals. I know I've uh, said it quite a bit uh, and kind of covered a lot, tried to cover a lot of different things in a, in a 10 minute time, uh, but I hope that uh, our conversations will continue on and then we can all work together, uh, whether through our the, the cross uh, dimensions of our faith traditions, our cultural traditions, uh, just to bring value uh, to our communities. Because again, stronger together we move forward is, is the motto we all live and breathe. And thank you SBA for doing this and making this connection with the communities and the faith community leadership as well. Wow, thank you so much, Imam. One of the most important things I heard you say is that um, the importance of family and community and working together so that all prosper. What a great message. Thank you so much for sharing um, about Islam and those value statements uh, from your faith. And we're just delighted to be in partnership with you. Thank you for Thank being you. with us. Um, if I may just take a moment of indulgence, would our participants, yes, uh, please uh, turn on your cameras. May I take a quick photograph of all of us I'd love to uh, make sure that this goes out on social media before I get started talking about uh, SBA's 70th anniversary. All right, everybody ready? I'm doing it now. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Thank you, friends. Appreciate you. All right, so now, if I may, I'd like to share a little slide presentation about uh, SBA at 70 years, powering the American dream from 1953. Next slide, please. So what was happening in the 1950s? Well, there was a lot going on in the 1950s. Uh, fashion uh, included A-line and pencil skirts. After uh, World War II, people started getting back into things. But at the same time, 1950, the Korean War began when North Korea invaded South Korea. But there was also great strides in entertainment. Who does not love the I Love Lucy show? Uh, it premiered on television in the 1950s. One, in 1952, Elizabeth II became Queen of England. 1953, Jonas Salk develops the polio vaccine and color television was invented. 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that racial segregation is unconstitutional in the landmark Brown versus the Board of Education case, which highlights the fact uh, that things were not good for everybody in America. Uh, Black people were uh, suffering under Jim Crow laws. And in 1955, Rosa Parks said, no more. I'm not doing it. I'm not moving to the back of the bus. And she was arrested uh, and thus really began the civil rights movement. Next slide. So there's a lot happening in the 50s. Now, all of that having been said, uh, there were members of Congress who recognized the value that small businesses brought to the Korean War production economy. They were doing, small businesses were making America great just as they, you all do today. Uh, and so Congress recognizing that uh, said, hey, We've got to do something. We cannot, in fact, um, I want to share with you uh, a few of the quotes. Uh, Congressman Horace Dealey Brown Jr. said, we cannot afford 
to let our small businesses down during periods of time when our economy is not geared to defense production and then expect the same small businesses to be at our beck and call in time of national emergency. The proposed SBA takes small business out of the role of a war-born stepchild and gives it the permanent type of assistance within one central agency, which it deserves. Congressman Jesse Walcott from Michigan said, this bill seeks to protect the competitive system by giving assurance that all small businesses can at all times compete for a fair and equitable share of the production effort. And one more quote from Congressman Phil Philbin of Massachusetts, I have always regarded small business to be the very heart of our great American economic machine. It is in truth the symbol of free opportunity and the American vehicle for freedom of enterprise, initiative and individual economic action in our nation. It has been through small business that most of our American success stories have been written. Innumerable Americans, starting from humble beginnings by virtue of their vision, ability, courage, and hard work, have recorded great achievements in small business. And that's just a few of the quotes that were spurring around at the potential creation of the SBA. And we know that to be so true. Over 32 million Americans have small businesses today. Next slide. So, borrowing a, a, a famous campaign slogan, Ike likes small business. And so uh, in 1953, he signed the Small Business Act that created the SBA, and he kept on talking about it in his State of the Union addresses in 1955 and 56, saying the prosperity of our small business enterprises is an indispensable element in the maintenance of our economic strength. We shall continue to help small business to obtain access to adequate financing, and to competent counsel on management, production, and marketing problems. We shall continue to make certain that small business has a fair opportunity to compete for government contracts. And that is what we do today at SBA. Next slide, please. Continuing that legacy, uh, the Small Business Act included counsel for small business management practices. And so here is our SBA resource partner network. There are 10 regional offices across the nation, along with 68 district offices in all states and territories of the United States. We work closely with our resource partners SCORE, the Small Business Development Centers, the Women's Business Centers, the Veteran Business Opportunity Centers, and they advise small businesses on every stage of growth and development. By 1963, there were uh, more than 50 independent groups across the country providing low-cost or no-cost counseling. Finally, in 1964, SCORE became SBA's first partner with over 2,000 volunteer members helping small business owners with their expertise and know-how to achieve success. Today, there are over 10,000 four volunteers who last year held nearly 280,000 mentoring sessions with business owners across the nation. In 1976, the University Business Development Center program began as a, poly, a pilot at Cal State Polytech, and by 1980, the program had expanded and became known as the Small Business Development Center Network. There are nearly a thousand centers across the U.S. and territories providing consulting, training, and other services to approximately one million small business owners and entrepreneurs every year. In the 1990s, we added two of our newest partners to the SBA family, the Women's Business Center Network 
and the Veteran Business Outreach Centers. These centers together are helping women and veterans achieve their entrepreneurial goals. And SBA also partners with other federal agencies, uh, such as the U.S. Department of Commerce and the Exim Bank, uh, in an enterprise known as the U.S. Export Assistance Centers to help small businesses expand through international trade. Next slide, please. And so I've taken you through uh, the past, and here is SBA now. Uh-oh, we don't have the sound, but it's really neat. It's a really catchy tune. Well, while Talia figures out what's happening with my video, um, I will also share with you um, that we are going to hear from those awesome resource partners next uh, on our panel uh, that will include every one of our resource partners who are helping small business owners grow and achieve their goals. We make connections, we open doors, we focus on small businesses. We help them spark change. We are the catalyst for growth. Powering the American dream for 70 years, we are the SBA. Thanks so much for that. I appreciate y'all's attention. Now I'd like to turn it over to my colleague and partner in this endeavor, Terry Bolden is the Deputy District Director in the Columbus, Ohio District Office. And as um, the, I think it was uh, our Regional Administrator, Alan Thomas, who said, you can't do it alone. Friends, I am here to tell you, I could not have done this alone. There is a great ancient uh, scripture that says, two are better than one for they have a good return for their effort. If the one falls down, Terry can help her up. <laughs> and that is what he's done, friends. He is amazing. And thank you, Terry, for all that you've done, your Herculean effort uh, to put this webinar together. Couldn't have been done without you. I turn it over to you now, my friend, to uh, share with us this marvelous panel of SBA resource partners. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that, Althea. As they say, many hands make light work. So we're all working uh, to make this uh, program successful. For all of the 30 plus million businesses that we serve across the US, small business is a big deal here at the SBA. And it's all about meeting businesses where they are. We could not do that without our resource partners. Today, we're gonna to hear from four resource partners from both Ohio and in Florida and learn how their services have played a role in assisting businesses start, grow, and expand uh, throughout the country. Today, we'll hear from uh, Women's Business Center uh, Senior Director, Nicole Leotis. Uh, she's the Senior Director for the ECDI Business Center here in Ohio. She is dedicated to carrying it out the Women's Business Center mission of leveling the playing field for women entrepreneur, entrepreneurs by eliminating the unique obstacles that they face in the business world. We'll also hear from the SBDC uh, director, who's a, also a certified business consultant, Mr. George Gatton, who specializes in working with creative economy entrepreneurs. He has over 20 plus years of management experience with large banking institutions as well as small private and public corporations. We'll love to hear about his highly sought after uh, art uh, that he has been commissioned to create there in the uh, South Florida area. And then we'll also hear from uh, SCORE ch uh, Chairman, uh, Dr. Jason Jackson from South Florida, who is a sought after innovative theorist and transformational uh, guide. Uh, he's been uh, on Forbes Finance uh, Council member. He's also a U.S. Naval veteran. Thank you, sir, for your service. And a community organizer who is often covered 
by over 150 media outlets such as CNBC, TBN, and the Boston Globe. Welcome, panelists. Uh, we'll start with you, uh, Nicole. Um, tell us briefly about yourself, the Women's Business Center, and who and what businesses you serve as clients. Yes, thank you, Terry. Uh, good morning, everyone. Nicole Liotta, Senior Director of the Women's Business Center. Uh, so glad to be here this morning. Uh, a little bit about myself. I have a uh, marketing background. I have been with the Women's Business Center um, for seven years, and I have a mission of, of serving and helping people um, that's been historically underserved and that look like me, where we can really level the playing field. Um, so a little bit about ECDI and the Women's Business Center. Um, so the Women's Business Center is a national um, network of women's business centers across the country. There are 145. We have uh, one in all 50 states. And um, our mission is to level the playing field for female entrepreneurs. And the way that we do that here in the state of Ohio is through training, coaching, and access to capital. And I would be remiss to say that even though we are the Women's Business Center, we do serve all entrepreneurs um, and really our focus is uh, serving the historically underserved um, entrepreneurs. I'm going to pass it back to Terry. Thank you, Nicole. You're welcome. And, uh, uh, Mr. Gadsden, uh, I know you're down in South Florida. Tell us a little bit about uh, your organization and talk about the SBDC and uh, your role. Well, good afternoon and good morning, everyone. Uh, George Gadsden, I'm the Associate Director and Business Consultant here at the Florida SBDC at Florida Atlantic University. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for George Gadsden, uh, Associate Director of Florida Small Business Development Center here at FAU. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for having uh, SBDC be represented here, and I'm I'm honored and pleased uh, to be with such an esteemed group of individuals. I joined SBDC 12 years ago. Uh, my background, actually, uh, I graduated from Duke University with a degree in theology. Uh, I went to Duke to become a Baptist minister. That didn't happen at the time, but rather I went into banking, and it was through my banking experience that I decided that I would explore art to get away from the stress. And that was the beginning of my starting my journey as an entrepreneur. So I joined SBDC 12 years ago, uh, and my role here is working as uh, was mentioned earlier with individuals in the creative economy, those artists uh, who are wanting to take their art and their art business to the next level. But because of my business background, my banking background, working also with uh, pre-ventures as well as uh, established businesses and those individuals who've been in business for at least um, you know three years or more. Here at the Florida SBDC, we work specifically with uh, companies uh, on all different levels, uh, focusing in from startups to international trade, uh, providing that one-on-one -on -one consulting services uh, to those types of businesses. Uh, individuals who are wanting to take their products to the, uh, on an international level, uh, working specifically with our international trade specialists. And the most important, not that the others aren't as important, but working with our consultants here for access to capital. Uh, Mr. Thomas mentioned earlier uh, the relationship that uh, the, the banks have with uh, SBA. So we, when the clients come to us, uh, we help them get ready to be bankable. And once they've reached that level, we then find that appropriate loan for them, typically through the SBA lenders, as we can help them fulfill their dreams. I'll turn this back over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, George. Uh, Dr. Jackson. Technical issues. Uh -oh. We hear you, sir. Can you hear me? All right. All right. Wonderful. It looks stranger than it is. Well, my name's uh, Jason Jackson. I'm here to represent uh, chair. I'm the chairman of SCORE Palm Beach County. Um, SCORE stands for Service Corps of Retired Executives. And as, as Althea mentioned, it's been around since 1964. And uh, the uniqueness regarding SCORE is that um, we are all mentors and uh, and and basically all of us are, are either entrepreneurs 
actively entrepreneurs, retired entrepreneurs, or senior executives. And um, and so we give our time for free. As mentioned before by Althea, we have thousands of volunteers. We're one of the largest um, volunteer organizations with over 10,000 volunteers. Um, as of fiscal year 22, we closed, we created um, 82,000 non-owner jobs, started 30,000 businesses, and um, and we overall jobs there was 112,000. We actually are one of the most efficient uh, because of our volunteerism. So one of the most efficient partners of the federal government. Um, our average cost to create one job is about $170. And um, so we, it's, it's, a gr it's great to serve um, with SCORE. By way of background, um, I also am an entrepreneur, as mentioned by Terry. I've been on, I was one of the first to join the Forbes Finance Council. I'm the top, one of the top private equity professionals in my space. I started an investment bank some years ago, and we are an investor and lender um, in, in uh, lower middle market businesses, small businesses, um, and uh, commercial real estate. And throughout that time, I purchased and built about 10 companies of my own. And I understand the uh, complications of being an entrepreneur. And, uh, and, fi and, and finally, by way of my background, I'm also a spiritual leader. And, um, and I think um, that it's so important, as, as previously mentioned, that the faith community, the you know, Department of Homeland Security, has a term that they use called cultural competency, particularly in times of disaster. And I think that it's uh, it's so important that those uh, that are imams and my family coming from an, from India, a Hindu background, uh, me being a Christian pastor, our Scientologist friends, and everyone in between, um, that we have access to the great um, capital resources, and I would say more importantly, the intellectual resources that are provided by the SBA um, and its partners, and as a resource partner that gives that those opportunities and our intellectual property as a service with SCORE, I'm glad to be here and, uh, and so thankful for this time that we're sharing together. Nicole, we'll, we'll ask you first. I know of many of the, the businesses that you help serve uh, in our community and throughout Ohio. Talk about not only your services, but some of the biggest success stories that you could share with delivering uh, access to capital contracts and resources with the Women's Business Center. Absolutely, thank you, Terry. Um, so some of the services that we have at the Women's Business Center is the one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, and so we realize that it takes a village uh, to run a business. And so being surrounded by those professionals is important where, um, you know, when you're starting your business, you um, might not have the capital to get an attorney, to get a CPA. And so we provide those services pro bono to our, our clients. Um, but then we also offer some uh, workshops. So we do a lot of cohort-based training. Uh, one of the things that we're focusing on right now is that digital um, online presence and digital literacy. So helping our businesses get an online presence, and that's, you know, logo design, website, um, branding and marketing. Um, those are specific, um, you know, cohort based trainings that we have. But as far as successes um, for, um, you know, the organization, I, I have two that I want to give. I want to give one for the organization and then do a client specific one. Um, so for the organization um, during COVID, we had the um, Paytech, Pay Paycheck Protection Program known as PPP. Um, and so because we are hosted by ECDI, which is the Economic and Community Development Institute, which is a micro lender for small businesses, we were able to get $44 million um, out on the street, um, you know, in the state of Ohio. And what's really successful about this is that these went to the smallest of small businesses. So, you know, that first round of PPP, um, you know, a lot of the minority owned businesses were left out, you know, through um, factors such as maybe not having a banking relationship and whatnot. So we were really able to help those small of smallest businesses and where the Women's Business Center came in, we were on the front lines of providing that technical assistance of getting those clients through the portal. Um, so I remember, you know, working 9 p.m., uh, taking phone calls um, and walking the clients through through that, but then also um, you know, paperwork is really tough when uh, starting a business and so walking them through that journey and then also um, providing that tax assistance. So a lot of the businesses didn't have their paperwork or their taxes done. So we sent them over to CPAs 
to uh, get their taxes done and be able to get them um, through the portal. So um, I do. I don't think my my team or my staff ever wish that again um, because we are working long, tires hours. But it's such a success of getting forty four million dollars out in the street to the smallest of small businesses. Um, as far as uh, the Women's Business Center and one of our specific clients, um, I've been working with this lady um, for since 2018. Her name is Tawana Scott Williams. Uh, she is the owner of Pearl Flower Brand, uh, which is a catering company. Uh, you know, she was an ICU nurse uh, and she had a love for cooking uh, through her, um, her, she had learned from her, her grandmother. Um, and she wanted to take that leap of faith of starting a business. And so she started off small um with the, the catering service um she she's worked with a lot of different resource partners uh, one being the women's business center she got access to capital uh, through us as well as that technical assistance and uh, she was um, able to go into rocket mortgage field house which is where the calves play um, and so she had a pop-up stand there but now she has a permanent stand at that location um, she's opened up a another restaurant at Case Western University here in Cleveland, and now um, uh, Cleveland Foundation is building a new uh, building, and she will be the anchor tenant. So she started out as a catering business. She uh, worked with all of the resource partners and was able to get that knowledge, that acumen, and that capital. Um, and as, as now, she has three restaurants, and she's doing very well in her catering business. And so she's such a joy and one of the things um, that I think keeps her business going is how much she's able to give back to the community as well. I will pass it um, back over to you, Terry. Thank you, Nicole. Much like um, the uh, Women's Business Center, George, um, their uh, counseling services are free. Can you tell us a little bit about the SBDC and what are some of your uh, big successes there in helping entrepreneurs in South Florida? Thank you very much. Um, all of our sessions uh, with our clients are confidential. Uh, we have that one-on-one -on -one, uh, opportunity to meet with our clients and develop what we like to think of, of good relationships. Uh, our success with our clients has in part has to do with that, just that we develop relationships where the client actually knows that we have their best interests at heart. So our one-on-one -on -one sessions, um, you know, are very important to us and, and, and the clients just look forward to coming to meet with us. As far as um, one of the successes, uh, there's actually three that I could share. Uh, I could say that one of the major successes has been since I joined uh, and coupled with one of my colleagues, he and I are faculty members in a program called the Artists as Entrepreneur Institute. Uh, and when I joined 12 years ago, we formed and created a program here called the Creative Entrepreneur Development Program. Artists, unfortunately, are not good business people. So hence, you know, they don't operate their, their business like they should. Uh, so we were able to through working with a partner with the Broward County Culture Division, uh, we're pleased to say that over since its inception, since uh, 16 years ago, we have actually taught artists how to think like business people. And that number has is a roughly around a thousand artists. So those artists are now on track. We have at least two or three that we've worked very closely with who have you know, gone on to bigger and better things uh, to the point that they are pretty prominent and recognized not only here in the United States, but also even in Europe uh, and starting their own publishing company as well. So we're really proud of that success. One other um, success we, it, with one of our consultants who specializes in international trade, uh, for a number of years, I've been working with one of her clients who started uh, his business in the garage and over a period of years uh, built his business to the point that it was grossing over $20 million in annual sales. And a few years ago was recognized on the national level uh, by SBA as a small business of the year. And then lastly, uh, year to date, uh, as far as helping businesses access capital, we right now are right about $50 million uh, in helping businesses all different sizes uh, in working with them, working with our banking partners and helping those clients access capital. Thank you very much. I'll turn it back over to you, Terry. 
Thank you, George. And uh, same question for you, uh, Dr. Jackson. Uh, talk a little bit about SCORE. I know you have a, uh, many businesses uh, or entrepreneurs who come to you and say, I want to start a business. What do I do? Uh, talk about uh, what, what and how you help your clients and um, any big successes that we could share with our participants. Well, th thank thank you so much. I, and um, you know, I joined SCORE only two and a half years ago to be a subject matter expert on capital raising, private placements, corporate law. And somehow uh, I became the chairman of uh, Palm Beach County, and um, which is a very dynamic, very dynamic county, as as one can imagine. Many people come to retire in Palm Beach County, and I say this about the value of SCORE. Um, some of the, we have in our chapter some of the best litigators, top CP, CPA firms. I mean, folks living in multi-million dollar homes, Palm Beach Island, Manalapan, and some great places. I don't boast in that, but I speak to the quality of the people who are offering their greatest assets. That's their intellectual property. And, um, and so that's, that's the things that they've learned over the course of time in running business. Um, I would say our chapter members are average in their 70s and uh, in the times that we're in um, we are called mentors not coaches and uh, when you talk about successes terry our successes are not even though i have a great uh case study our successes are not just when people start businesses right um our successes are also when people don't start businesses and and they walk through the process. We have a 12 step uh, roadmap that that score has. It's self paced, uh, but it's intended to be mentor guided. Um, and that's uh, that's available. That's online at score. It's a 12 step. Uh, it's a 12 part roadmap to determine the plan to to mobilize your business. And I would tell you that within the first two modules, if you decide that you want to pursue entrepreneurship, um, then we're, you know, it's it, it will give you an idea of it to, to determine that if that's the right path for you or not. And so it's not just when we create businesses, it's 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 helping people not start business or not start in the wrong business. Maybe they go on to be entrepreneurs later. Um, I would also say that um, as being mentors, because I, I encourage uh, for those that are joining to pursue a score chapter um, uh, in your area, because we are also people who live in your area. Um, I'm here in Palm Beach. We, you know, and 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 and, and I understand the the, the demographic um, and the opportunities and challenges for the business owners um, that are uh, in our in our constituency, if you will. And so that holds true to the 200 chapters that SCORE has. And um, and we're mentors. So I would tell you, um, Terry, and uh, that that. 60% of our sessions are counseling sessions and listening sessions that have nothing to do with business. And I know um, I know Nicole and, 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 and George could agree with that. It's when you're an entrepreneur, you need a life balance, right? You if the rest of your life is on fire um, and our entrepreneurs know that and, and, our, and our counselors that are here, when, when your household's on fire, your family is on fire, you're, you're navigating those complex things that come with life, it makes it very difficult to be a successful entrepreneur. And this is why mentors matter. Um, and this is why um, SCORE, uh, we work with the SBDC. I, I'd like to work closer than we currently do, but we do work with the SBDC. We work at FAU. Um, and uh, and of course, we refer to our women's and veterans partners. And um, as it relates more specifically to SCORE, um, we are lending our resources, things that we've done. We've had to monetize credibility ourselves. So I am actively building businesses, buying businesses as an individual, and I understand the complex uh, financing, structured finance, buyouts, divesting, sale leasebacks, and all of those things I have to know as an entrepreneur and in SCORE, I give that um, for free. Um, and uh, and, and to, to those who are willing to serve, I would say that we also help our municipalities. We're working with great cities like Green Acres, Bell Glade, if you look up Bell Glade, it's, it's deeply underserved up here in Palm Beach County. And we are working with municipalities on how to impact um, their communities with their economic development plan. And, um, and I would say that's an additional focus that, that SCORE has 
um, that may be unique to what we do. In terms of, Terry, of a specific item, I think about Oceana Coffee. Um, this is near and dear to uh, my heart for a lot of reasons. I, I was on the, on the greatest uh, Navy um, in the world. That's the U.S. Navy, by the way, if there's anyone questioning that, if you're wondering what I'm saying. And I was on board the greatest battleship that ever sailed the seven seas. That's the USS Carl Vinson. I'm a bit partial. And I was in Afghanistan in 01 and Iraq in 03 and an F-18 squadron. But I'll tell you what, when we ever had an opportunity to get coffee, it was a great time. And coffee has been near and dear to my heart since then. And, you know, Oceana Coffee, you, you can learn about them. They began, ro they're a roaster. They began roasting their beans in a popcorn maker because they didn't have the money. And they went from their garage to a building to this great big company that's serving uh, distribution sites, wholesale sites, retail sites right here in, uh, in South Florida. And, um, and, and, and this, be this vision began in 2009. And score, uh, we walked with them since their first op before their first opening in 2011, and to this day, um, we remain um, a resource in navigating the very complex um, situations of inflation, supply chain disruptions that that they now deal with as a mature business. So. I encourage you, if you're listening now, and if uh, whether you're a prospective business owner, a resource partner, to tell um, those folks that you know that are interested in in in, in supporting our country by through entrepreneurialism, go to your score chapter. Don't go when you're ready. Go because you're not ready. We're going to mentor you. We're going to guide you. We're going to help you get there. And uh, and I think uh, and, and faith is important in this. And I thank you for the opportunity to share more about SCORE, Terry. Back to you. Thank you. And I know it's all by volunteer services and uh, you do an amazing job uh, assisting small businesses. I will say uh, our Veteran Business Outreach Center um, participant was unable to attend, but however, um, if you need more information about our one of our 28 uh, veteran business outreach centers across the U.S., you can go to sba.gov forward slash veteran resources. Our uh, VBOX are programs that offer resources to veterans, service members, and military spouses who are interested in starting or growing a small business. I just wanted to throw that plug in. Uh, as we final uh, finalize our, our panel. Give me a takeaway. I know this is the million dollar question. Um, what does it take to be successful for a small business? Everyone has an idea and you know you try to you know put that on canvas and figure out okay what do I do next? We have all these free resources um, but what does it take to be successful and how does faith play in that just in short term? Uh, we'll go with you, Nicole, uh, George, and then we'll finish uh, with you, Jason. I think, you know, most business owners are just living on a prayer, right? <laughs> um, and so um, really, I think what it takes to uh, run a successful business, start or grow, is resilient. So be prepared for uh, to face setbacks um, and failures, but remain maintain the resilience, be able to bounce back, learn from your experiences. Um, I believe that's really important. And then just kind of adding um, for the, the woman component is that when a woman does well in business, she gives so much back to her family, her community, and in her employees. And so the bigger the impact women have, the better the world becomes. And so, um, and then one other thing I just want to touch upon too is um, self-care. I think that is very important with your business is if you're not 100%, you can't give your business 100%. So your mental health, your physical health, um, your spiritual health, that's all very important and plays a crucial role in um, having a successful business. Terry, from, <laughs> Terry from my perspective, there are a number of things that can, um, part of the ingredients of being a successful business owner, um, but one more, one important aspect of that is, is desire and passion. Individuals, you go into a business not because you think you're going to make a lot of money. The most important thing is going into the business because you're passionate about what you're doing. And I promise you, you do what you love, the money will come. The other part of this too is doing what you know you're called to do. I'm a man of faith. 
you know, as as uh, Nicole mentioned earlier, business owners have their ups and downs. But when you have the passion, you have the desire, and you know that, that you know that you know that you know that what you're doing, that you are called to do it, nothing can stop you. Nothing should stop you. Keep focused at the same time. Be willing to allow others to speak into your life. When you come to us here at SBDC or even at SCORE and, and the Women's Business Center, make yourself teachable so that they can help you grow, help you develop your business. And I'll end by saying this, using an analogy of a turtle. If you can imagine an open field with a fence post, and those of us who are from the country know about fence posts. You know, there's an open field, there's a fence post, and on top of that fence post is a turtle. Now, my question to you is, how did he get there? He got there because he had someone help him get there. So as a business owner, making yourself uh, available so that you can, your life can uh, be, a re you can be, basically spoken to by those individuals who are consultants speaking to your life, help you grow your business. And I'll say this, we here at SBDC, we help businesses grow, but we also help individuals grow. Thank you, back to you, Terry. Great, and um, you know, th you know, thanks Terry. And, um, and I've learned so much and I'd rather speak about the principles that I learn and these years over a decade being an entrepreneur, I have to remind myself still. Um, and and I would say that the first the first principle that I that I think of for myself is that um, money doesn't rule the world. Thoughts, ideas, and strategies do. Money doesn't rule the world. Thoughts, ideas, and strategies do. In business, you will often be drawn down to focusing on money because it is a real uh, circumstance. But, but if you want to buy the product, money buys the product. But if you need to buy the money, how do you buy the money? And, uh, and you buy the money by creating value. In business, you create value and people exchange their money with the value that you create. If you buy things on Amazon, which was once a small business selling books on this very strange thing called the internet that we did not know what it was, um, back then, as Jeff Bezos sold books from his garage to where he is today and where Amazon is today, you may use companies like Amazon not because you like or dislike them, but because they add value. So as a business person, never let the money dwarf you. So the first principle is you just remember money doesn't rule the world. Thoughts, ideas, and strategies do. Every day our business, our investment bank looks at business plans and we decide which ones we're going to invest in. But this is your intellectual prop property because there is a currency in the ideas um, that you have. The second thing I remind myself is that um, there's a danger of enter entering a season of entrepreneurship with an employee mindset. When you become an entrepreneur, but you have an employee mindset, you know, it's a challenge and there's a shift that needs to occur uh, because employees are paid for time and entrepreneurs are paid for results. As an entrepreneur, especially during COVID, I sunk 90% of my personal wealth, if not more, back into our business, not to lay off, not to stop systems, not to lose money. And it's challenging, but it took me years of getting there to become comfortable as much as that can be in that. So if you are an entrepreneur, remember that your mindset needs to be fortified. Um, and so remember that 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 there's a danger of entering seasons of entrepreneurship with an employee mindset. And the third and final thing is this. I would say that um, since we're speaking of faith uh, with a Hindu family, whether you're Hindu, Taoist or you're Buddhist, um, it, whether you follow the Is Islamic faith or, you, or you're a Jehovah Witness or a, a Protestant Christian or Catholic, um, we, we know that God and we believe that God endowed us. We are created. We are not here by accident. That's one thing that we all share. And I would tell you this to be true, that, 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 that our creator created you, uh, created the de a deficit in the world that only you can fill. God created the world with a deficit that only you can fill. You are uniquely, you are uniquely gifted and capable of solving problems, of answering questions 
that your generation would ask in this lifetime. And in other words, God created an opportunity for you to be successful. Success is when you solve the problems of other people. So when you're in business, it's because you're solving. When you're in, oh my goodness, you gotta be. You gotta be. That double guy. We hear you. Oh, there we Keep go. Going. <laughs> when you're in business, it, it's it, when you're in business. It's because we are solving problems, and um, it, you know when your business stops solving people's problems, whether they need clothes, whether they need coffee, whether they need to fix their car, whatever that is, when your business stops solving problems. Um, then you will no longer be successful. Um, so just remember that you are endowed with the ability to solve the problems and give answers to the questions that this generation will ask, and we do these things by faith. So thank you again for having me on, and uh, hopefully you were able to hear me. We, we, we heard you, Jason, loud and clear, and we want to say thank you, Nicole, George, and Jason, for imparting some wisdom i felt like i was being ministered to actually in this whole uh presentation of sorts and three things that i got i took away was resilience passion value and determination actually four uh we appreciate uh everything that you do and being a resource partner here uh with the sba thank you back to you althea wow Wow, that was amazing. And I will not pile on. I will move on because now we have uh, Pastor Derek Blue from Activate Church, and he is also an entrepreneur, and he is going to bring us uh, some words of inspiration and encouragement. He's been in ministry for over 20 years uh, as a pastor for 11 he is the co-founder and chief operating officer of Florida Development Corp, and he's the CEO of Blueprint Ventures. Uh, but his focus and calling is on improving communities through spiritual and economic development. What a marvelous combination. Thank you for being with us, uh, Dr. Blue. Thank you so much. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Well, well, perfect. Well, I, I first want to say I, I'd like to say thank you, uh, Althea. Thank you for the SBA team for uh, for having me, and I've uh, been so encouraged by everything that I've heard thus far. So um, I'll, I'll get right into this. Uh, you know, my work is to uh, redevelop and do what I call create economic engines in vulnerable communities, and I understand that you know it it takes uh, a lot to do that. It takes. Uh, physical work, it takes real estate development, it takes entrepreneurial uh, uh, skill sets and uh, understanding that a lot of what we do uh, is changing mindsets to help break generational patterns that exist. And, and as a pastor, uh, oftentimes in our churches, we, we check our brains at the, uh, the lobby of the church, uh, but, but God has called us to take our faith into the community and uh, give feet to our faith. Um, so uh, Psalm 24 uh, says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all who dwell in, uh, uh, therein. Uh, God created the earth. Uh, the problem was that there was a void. The Bible said that the earth was void uh, and the solution was God created. There was a void and then there was creation to fill that void. And we were created by that same God. So therefore, we have to understand that he invested in each of us uh, a few things. For those who may be watching online or watching the replay, uh, you may be an entrepreneur. Uh, I want for you to know that uh, God has invested something in each of us. He's uh, invested uh, gifts in each of us, something that is unique to us. Uh, uh, he's invested a conviction in us. That is the passion to carry that out. Uh, a skill set, uh, the capacity to learn a thing and to put it into practice. And then he's also blessed us and created us with influence. So with all of those things, he, he expects us to steward and invest those things back into the earth that he created. Uh, so I want to leave three quick points uh, uh, for any entrepreneur or business leader that may be watching. Uh, uh, and speaking of creation, 
uh, we were commanded to, to, to be fruitful and multiply. So point number one is God created us to create. Uh, he's given us the ability to look at water and create boats. Uh, he's giving us he, he's given us the aptitude to look at a tree, uh, but to see a table. Uh, he's given us the ability just like he had. We were created in his image to look at a problem and create a solution. Uh, what is man that you're so mindful of him? God has endowed his creation with so much insight and power, which leads me to point number two. Uh, God created us to have dominion. Uh, we're ambassadors with delegated authority. Uh, he's given us the power and right to control a territory. Of all of his creations, what God did for man was he gave us the ability to rule and to reign. Uh, but but not simply to rule and to reign, uh, but because we're his children, he's given us the responsibility uh, to expand his kingdom beyond the four walls of our churches uh, and to let what we experience in his presence permeate into the same communities that we res uh, that 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 we serve. And this is more than just emotional experiences. Uh, that are triggered by a Hammond B3 organ. But what this is about is taking the wisdom that he's given us uh, and to implement that wisdom into the political realm, into the entrepreneurial landscape, to create and operate within ecosystems that build communities, to take this gospel that we preach and make it very, very practical to the communities that we serve. Uh, so point three, and this is my last point, uh, God created us to depend on him. First point is he created us to create. Uh, the second point is he created us to have dominion. The third point is he created us to depend on him. Uh, and one of the greatest examples of this truth is actually found in the Gospels, Matthew chapter 14. And it's a perfect parallel of how entrepreneurship works. Uh, the disciples were told to get on a boat with an instruction to go to the other side. I want to ask you something that you, if you're listening, what's your other? the side what are you what what's your goal we have to define what our vision is we have to know where we're going in order to get there because if you don't know where you're going you won't be able to get there but once you define where you're going like these disciples did they knew that their assignment was to get to the other side uh, uh but as they attempted to go to the other side they were confronted with a storm uh the storm came and it and it and, and they faced opposition and what I'd like to say to every entrepreneur, don't let the storm stop you from getting to the other side. Uh, if you're watching, uh, you're in the midst of resources. Uh, we, we've heard uh, the great resources that the SBA offers and that many who are on this uh, uh, this 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 panel, these panels that, that they'll offer, but don't allow your storm to stop you. So as they were going to the other side, the storm came. Uh, COVID-19 was a storm and unfortunately it stopped many people. Uh, economic downturn is a storm. There, there, there are so many different things that are storms that are aimed at stopping us. But what we have to do is we have to have a tenacity. Uh, we have to have the faith. We have to remember that we were created to create. We were created to have dominion and no storm is gonna be able to stop what God has set in motion. We just can't give up. So they were in panic mode because the storm came. And I know that there were many entrepreneurs. I work with tons of entrepreneurs. I've worked with people who, who lost their businesses during the pandemic. And then at the same time, you know, we poached uh, through our firm and through our efforts, uh, companies that became millionaires, uh, eight figure companies through the same pandemic. The storm will either make you or break you. But as they were in panic mode, they saw something. They saw Jesus walking on the water. They saw the God of creation. Uh, they saw the express image of God walking on top of what was aimed at destroying them. And one of the disciples who happens to be one of my uh, favorite disciples, his name is Peter. Peter was in that same boat as well as the other disciples. And uh, 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 1% of the disciples by the name of Peter, everybody else was panicking, but Peter asked a very, very important question. He said, Lord, if it's really you, allow me to walk on the water with you. Now, this was seemingly impossible. And as entrepreneurs, we have to understand that there's really no impossibilities. There's just uh, perhaps the lack of will. Uh, as uh, 
uh, Tori and Wilson says, or or they're, they're just maybe you haven't found the right solution, but nothing is impossible. Uh, so Peter asked the question, Lord, if it's you, let me come out on the water with you. And then Jesus spoke his word. You know, as we talk about faith, we know that our faith is founded upon his word. What we do has the has a foundation in his word. And Jesus spoke that word and he said, come. He said, come on out, Peter. And Peter did what a lot of us have done. Those of you who may be watching, those who are panelists, what we've done is that we stepped out on a word. He stepped out on the word and he actually began to walk on the water. It seemed impossible, but he was doing, he was was doing it. And perhaps I'm speaking to somebody uh, who, who grew up in the projects. Maybe you, you grew up in a low income home like myself. Maybe you, you your back was against the wall, but you heard a word and you stepped out on faith on that word. You stepped out by faith on that word. And Peter began to, to walk on the water. It, it was seemingly impossible, but he was doing it. He was doing it. And I wanna encourage somebody and say, you can do it. You can walk on the water. You can walk in this marketplace, even in the midst of a, a recession, uh, you can walk on the waters of recession. Some of the greatest companies were 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 developed. The fortune, a lot of the Fortune 500 companies that we see today were developed during times of economic downturn. But Peter, like many of us, he stepped out on the word. And he did what, what people thought was impossible, but something happened. And this is what we want to prevent from happening as I close. Peter began to take his eyes off of Jesus. Let me make it practical. He began to lose faith. He began to lose faith because he started looking at the problem instead of looking to the solution. And when he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. But the great news is, he said, Lord, help me. And he reached his hand up, the same God that created the universe in the person of Jesus Christ, reached his hand and picked him up. And for many of you watching, and I'm finished, this is my second closing. Uh, for many of you who are watching, the SBA is a, is a hand that I believe that God uses to pick you up. When that hand is reaching, make sure you grab hold to it. So I'm finished. Again, thank you. Uh, this has been Pastor Blue. God bless. Wow, Pastor Blue, thank you so much. That was so rich with a lot of wisdom that we will all have to unpack on the YouTube replay. Thank you so much. Now I want to introduce uh, a Columbus, Ohio District Director, Everett Woodell. He is amazing. And I'm so glad that he is the host for our next panel of small business owners uh, who will share how SBA helped their businesses grow and how faith played a role in that. Thank you, Everett. Take it away. Thank you, Althea. All I have to say is, wow, this has been amazing, right? For the third annual Faith Forum, Special thanks to all of the resource partners, all of the faith leaders for taking time out of your day to share you know, your faith with us and what you provide our small businesses. And Althea and Terry, the passion that both of you show for our small business is infectious. And thank you, thank you for all that you do in helping put this together. You know, I'm honored to be here, but, and for this next segment, right Althea, this is where the rubber hits the road. All those resource partners, all that faith, now it's about the small businesses, those entrepreneurs who take all of that faith and resources. And today with us, we have three highly successful minority-owned small businesses. So I'm excited. Let's kick this off, and I'm going to introduce uh, our three panelists. With us today, we have Bernadette Morris. She is the founder and CEO of Sunshine Communications located in the sunny Miami of uh, Florida. She started that business in 1993. A, near, a dear friend of mine from the Cincinnati area, Cynthia Booth, Booth, she is the president and CEO of Emerge Manufacturing. And Orlando Espinanzo, co-founder co of Emeno, located or media located in Miami, Florida. I see you got two Miami, Florida small businesses on this panel. But that is great, and I'm so glad that they are all with us today. 
Um, what I'm going to do to kick it off, I'm going to go with Bernadette first, Bernadette first, and Bernadette, tell us just briefly about yourself and how you started your business. Well, thank you so much for allowing me to be here and to have listened and heard so many wonderful jewels and nuggets from everybody today. So it has been um, quite a journey and an, an honor. Um, Bernadette Morris, Sunshine Communications. Sunshine's now 30 years old, started it with a vision and a desire and a big step of faith to go out and, and really have an impact to make a difference to, to help um, businesses, organizations, faith-based groups throughout the country with um, creative public relations, marketing and advertising services that would fit and work within their budget. It was um, a big leap of faith and here we are 30 years later and very blessed and honored to say that we're still growing and going strong. So thank you for that question. Thank you, Bernadette. So let's move on to Cynthia, same question. Uh, tell us uh, briefly about yourself and how you started your business. So thank you very much, Everett. It is a delight to be here. And for all of those who have preceded us, thank you for the word. I almost felt like I was in church. I was thinking that the only thing we need to do is now pass the offering plate because your words were so and in, so incredibly uh, a blessing to us. So I'm Cynthia Booth. I am um, President and CEO of Emerge Manufacturing. Emerge Manufacturing is a purpose-driven company. We are in the business of producing um, what we call uh, products that help protect and save lives. Um, I started this company just a couple of years ago, but before starting Emerge Manufacturing, I was a banker. Um, decided to become a banker after deciding not to become a lawyer. So um, did that and then left the bank and knew that I was never going to own the bank. So my desire to own a company, I made the decision to actually take all of um, my resources and put them into a brand that I was intrigued by, and that was McDonald's. So I bought one McDonald's. I scaled it to 10, um, and it was a successful company. I helped so many of our employees, over 500 employees, really do well, uh, left the company and then started Emerge. Emerge is, as I said, a purpose-driven company. We, per, we provide products that protect and save lives, specifically PPE products. We have a very large healthcare system that has come along beside us. They're our first customer, and we are in the process of building a 50,000 square foot new manufacturing facility in Cincinnati, where we will not only be able to provide great jobs for this community that we're in, but we also bought the land. So I am the landowner and the first African-American female developer in Cincinnati. It is a blessing. It is a walk of faith. It is a belief that God prepared me for this journey and I'm his vessel to do his work. So I am delighted to be here. Thank you, SBA, for all the great work that you do in helping small businesses uh, succeed. So thank you, Everett. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Cynthia. And I couldn't agree with you more. It, I felt like I was back in church. Uh, and that is just the Iman and the pastor. We still have a rabbi to go. So again, <laughs> what, what a great, a great uh, content we have today. Orlando, same question. Tell us briefly about yourself and how, um, how you started your business. Yeah, or Orlando has been also with uh, m and Media. Um, we design, develop, and implement outreach programs for government agencies, municipalities, and non-for-profits to help them effectively market their brand. And the reason why we do this is because we look at the Great Commission of being able to share the gospel and the good news. And I think that that's one of the key things that as business owners, um, sometimes people tend to overcomplicate and overthink things when it comes to starting a business, scaling a business, and growing a business. Um, and, and I think that one of the key things that we have found is that um, we've simplified information. So I consider myself a simplified of information because when all is said and done sometimes uh the goal is always to help our community and to help the uh entrepreneurs that we actually work with so we've had an opportunity to come in and work with uh large um government agencies municipal 
companies and non-for-profits to simplify that same information that they want to give uh, to the business owners. Because as a business owner, we think differently, we process things differently, and sometimes we're giving too much information and that's not what people want. People wanted to uh, have information that's simplified. And I think that that's one of the key things that we've been doing within our business is the more information that we can simplify, the more businesses will be able to help because it's not about all the words that we share, it's about the simplified words that we actually share. Orlando, thank you so much for being here today as well. So let's um, let's kind of tie it all back together. And in, in my next question, and Bernadette, we'll start with you. So it's kind of a two-part question. Um, prior to the pandemic, tell us how you were doing, and you know, were you thriving and growing? And then, how during the pandemic did you have to pivot, or did you not have to pivot? And what are some of the resources? Looking back on our resource panel that you were able to utilize to, to assist you, whether it be SBA, PPP, IDLE, Women Business Centers, or so forth. So it's kind of a two-part question, but I'm kind of, we're trying to tie it back to the resource partners. Bernadette? Uh, absolutely. Um, prior to the pandemic, um, the company was growing and, and doing very well. Um, we had uh, recently just graduated from the 8A program, and a big thanks to, to SBA for their assistance in, in helping us to get through that and, and making that work. And we were fortunate to have a number of uh, government contracts as well as small businesses and corporations here throughout Florida and, and the nation. Um, so things were moving very well and moving along. The pandemic hit and of course everything took a little pause button, um, but again, through SPA and, and some of the, the loans and support, we were able to, to continue to keep all of our team members uh, employed. And we just migrated a little from working directly in the office to more of a remote location, but we were then able to continue to function and help other businesses in that functionality process as well. So a, a great deal of it has to do with um, your mental state uh, keeping yourself as a business owner um, confirmed and, and in charge and also empowering your team. Um, so understanding the value of the team you work with and understanding the value and the services you received through support with SBA and, and their partners, I think, continue to, to help us grow and stay strong and continue to thrive uh, as a business. And so now we're all on the other side. And we are looking back and we're learning and growing from from that experience that we had. And so it, it definitely is a journey and a process, but one I can say with with um, great joy, we overcame and we were able to succeed. Thank you so much. And Cynthia, same question, tying it back to the resource partners. You have a little different story in that you were that you've had businesses, but you're doing something that's kind of pandemic related as well. But tell us your story. How were you doing? Were you thriving and growing growing uh, prior to the pandemic? And did you have to pivot? Um, and I think the answer on the pivot is quite a bit of pivot, right? Uh, and a whole new business. So please tell us your story. So prior to the pandemic, we were doing very well. We were, we were running double digit increases. Uh, we were selling a lot of hamburgers, fries and Cokes. Our customers were loving us. Everything was going great. But even during that success, we knew, I knew that there was something else that I believe God was calling me to do. So I created a business plan that uh, would actually uh, create a manufacturing facility. And I did all the financial projections. I pulled on all the experience I had when I worked for the bank and all my experience I had with working with SBA. And I put together a business plan and then the pandemic hit. So this business this has nothing to do with the pandemic. It has to do with the foresight that I had to grow into something different. And so by virtue of that, we um, had this, this idea that we were going to create a business that would protect and save lives. That's what we do. We produce products that protect and save lives. And we saw the devastation of what COVID did. And it was during this opportunity that a new door opened for us. And it was the courage and the faith to walk away and sell my McDonald's restaurants, which were doing very well, and to walk on faith to start this new business. 
I had no idea that the, one of the largest healthcare systems in the country, the 20th largest one, actually, they also operate hospital systems outside of the U.S., would approach us when we had not even produced one product and ask us, if the, if we would be willing to allow them to allow them to be our first customer, and we did, and so by virtue of that, we have now transformed out of the McDonald's business into a business that I'm most proud of, because this business is about changing lives. It's also about protecting lives, and for that, I'm I'm really excited about what what yet will happen in this brand new building that we're building on six acres of land that we purchased, because I believe that God is just using me as his vessel to do his work. And I will do his work because I believe that he's walking beside me. The doors that have been opened have been incredible, much more than I would have ever anticipated. So we're on a journey right now, and I believe that uh, we're gonna get exactly where we want it to be, but more importantly, where God wants us to be. Cynthia, thank you so much for sharing that story with us. We greatly appreciate it. Orlando, same question. How, uh, you know, prior to the pandemic, tell us how you were doing. Were you thriving? And if you had to pivot, what kind of resources uh, did you utilize to help you uh, throughout some very tumultuous times? Yeah, I, I will actually share that the business was actually doing well. It was doing really good. Um, and during the pandemic, uh, we just continued to evolve because we were already running workshops online. We were doing the virtual thing where a lot of people were trying to play catch up. Uh, we were actually coming in and uh, putting together programming for them because we were already doing it. Um, and one thing that I will tell you is that when we launched the company, uh, the business in um, 2010, uh, we went to the source and, and we knew about the, um, the U.S. Small Business Administration, the SBA. And one of the key things that I love to do is I love information. I love to gather information. I also love to simplify it. And one of the key things that we found in these relationships that we built with the um, SBA in South Florida, with Jonah Althea and, and their team, uh, one of the key things that um, they became our trusted advisors for a lot of things that we did. So during the pandemic, what we did was that how can we disseminate information to the small business community and start working with them and their resource partner in order to explain what the PPP and the IDA loan is and, and so forth. And we work closely to uh, design information. And one of the key things uh, within these workshops was the goal was always to come in and help as many businesses as we can by way of giving them uh, information where we would simplify it because a lot of times information is so convoluted um, and there's just so much stuff to it and a lot of times business owners feel overwhelmed so one of the key things that we did was that we just continued doing what we were doing but we did it at a bigger scale but we did get to partner with the SBDC in, in South Florida at FIU um, and the SBA and, and some of the other resource partners from SCORE and so forth to come in and continue doing the work that we were already doing but I think that that's one of the key things that we found that if you want to be at the forefront continue doing what what you've been called to do and uh, one of the key things that we've done is that our business continue to expand we still do a lot of the virtual uh workshops seminars uh we're still doing workshops with the sbdc we're still doing workshops with with score but one of the key things that i will tell you is that a lot of businesses out there they just need someone to to listen to and as you've heard some of the resource partners talk about what their their mission is is to assist and help them i think that that's one of the key things that i am one of the people that i don't give up uh, i'm going to go and i'm going to knock on doors and i'm going to ask questions and i know that one of the key things that i love is resources and information and and the goal has always been how do we uh, tap into these resources where a lot of people may not have heard of them uh, but I do believe that one of the key things that if anybody wants to scale and grow their business is definitely tapping not only into the SBA and what they provide, but it's also the resource partners that they work with. And we just kept doing that and that's what we still do it to this day and age. Thank you, Orlando. A again, it's refreshing, you know, back to Althea when she gave the history of the 70 years of the Small Business Administration. You know, our mission is that, right? To help small businesses. And, you know, it was trying times during the pandemic. It's just refreshing and, and, and you know, blessed that we were able to help so many small businesses and provide them guidance and, and the resources they need. The pandemic was a very, very trying time for many of our small businesses. Um, so now we tie it back to our resource partners. What I'd like to do is, this is a faith forum. 
And, you know, you and all the four of us have kind of had a meeting when we were making sure the technology worked and so forth. And, you know, acts of community service and give back are important, are important during challenging times, right? So how do you, do you engage and meet the needs of your community? And did faith provide uh, you the strength and encouragement? And I will start with you, Bernadette. Absolutely. Um, prayer changes things. I think we all knew that. Many of us grew up not only saying that, but believing that and living that in everything that we did. So part of what I did, um, which was very helpful, believe it or not, to, to a number of women uh, in business through one of my nonprofit organizations called Women Grow Strong, is I had prayer sessions every single day with women. Um, they would call in, I would provide that Zoom link and they would call in and we would pray through. We would break strongholds and situations that may come into our lives, um, challenges from is the business going to survive to will I have enough money to pay the bills for, for my team as well as my family. So daily prayer sessions um, took place Monday through Friday usually from 7 to 8 30 a.m. and then we would start our day and that gave us that strength and determination I think to to move forward to the next day. Um, helping businesses um, with the basic general services that that my company provides was also critical in what we did but not only helping businesses helping the communities of the businesses as well because when a business isn't out there uh, working then stores aren't able to have resources and people aren't buying things from from them from the restaurants to to the everyday shops so there was just that desire and need to work with one another in our communities and to provide things for those who needed it so we made it a point to do that through Women Grow Strong and Sunshine Communications and also showcase and share information through yet another business, um, Black PR Wire, in sharing what businesses and minority businesses in particularly were doing throughout the country. So being that um, mechanism and providing that service was one of the key factors that helped us build and grow um, stronger with one another locally then of course statewide and of course nationally as well. It was a great tool, one that we're continuing to this very day. Amazing work, Bernadette. Thank you so much for sharing that. Cynthia, uh, same question to you. You know, give back is important during challenging times and how, did, how do you engage uh, to meet the needs of your community? And obviously did your faith provide you the strength and encouragement? So thank you, Everett. Absolutely, it did. So I am from a family of uh, six ministers. So six generations of ministers in our family. My son happens to be a minister. So we walk by faith every single day. We also understand the importance of giving back to our community. So when I owned the McDonald's restaurants, it was uh, important as I saw mothers who were single moms trying to juggle the whole process of being in the midst of a pandemic. Their kids were trying to learn online. So we provided resources for them in, in community rooms in our restaurants to help them, to feed them, to give back to the community. People didn't have food, so we fed them for free. But even with the business that I have now launched, inside this new building that we're building is a community room and it's designed to teach and train individuals that live in this community about things like health disparities. What do you do when there's a health disparity in your family? How do you overcome that? The other thing that we are, we will be doing because of our faith and we believe that God opens doors for one person so that you can open doors for others. And I believe that I'm the person that's opened this door in this community, that these jobs that we will hire over 100 people over the next three years will be an opportunity for them to become successful in terms of their own right to get the proper housing to to provide for their families so these are all the things that we incorporated into building this building so that we can provide great jobs for them we can provide resources that will help them with health disparities that may exist in this community and 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 beyond this community and we will be able to also provide jobs for young women 
So we are a member of an organization called Women in Manufacturing. And so we will actually train them on how manufacturing works and actually help them get their associate's degrees to go on and become engineers, bioscientists. These are all things that will happen inside of our plant. And so I am a believer that if you make one step, God makes two. I believe that. I'm just making one step and he's going to provide me to, with the resources to make two. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Uh, as with Bernadette, that, that, that's amazing. That's an amazing story and that will truly help that community in Cincinnati. So thank you for what you're doing. Orlando, same question for you, sir. Um, give back is obviously important during challenging times. How do you, you engage to meet the needs of your community? And did faith provide you the strength and encouragement? Yeah, I, I will tell you one thing. One of the key things that uh, we've done within the company and one of the things that I do is that uh, we've been looking at the teachings of Jesus and, and what Jesus did for um, society as a whole. And, and I think that the empathy that he he showed is the same thing that we did during the pandemic and we continue to do uh, was one of the key things that we did was make ourselves available. Um, as a business owner, we think like business owners and the goal was never to come in and try to sell our services to any of the businesses that we talked to. So we set up, you know, a Friday Day, what we considered a, a CEO chingwag uh, and chingwag, you know, um, is used more in, in, in England, but it's a, a roundtable conversation. And on Fridays, we were just open it up to people to come in and talk and and, and ask questions about what it was that they needed, uh, because the goal was to ensure that no business was lost. The goal was to ensure that none of the business closed down because they didn't get the right information or the right resources. So one of the key things that we set back and we looked at is how do we make ourselves available? Because the goal for us was to come in and check a box. The goal for us wasn't to come in and say, hey, yay, you know what, we we came in and this is what we did. No, we want we were looking at more impact and real impact because a lot of people were struggling. They were people that they were looking at their livelihood, you know what, um, doors closing down, uh, people were struggling to stay open. And I think that this is one of the key things that uh, I love to create and I'm a creative being. And sometimes just giving people a word of, of encouragement or sometimes just coming in and listening to them and, and, and finding out what their real needs were. Uh, was it, you know, what that they needed money for rent? Was it because they needed food? Um, and I think that that's one of the key things that has helped us connect with the community because it wasn't only the business need that they had, but it was the personal and spiritual needs that that they had because a lot of people needed to build their faith and a lot of people needed to shift and change their mindset re realizing that this too shall pass so i believe in the power of encouragement and i believe in the power of, of faith and that's one of the key things that we've all been commissioned you know to to spread the gospel and share the good news of jesus and that's one of the key things that we did um and we continue to do because once all this is over and done with the goal is to uh definitely uh meet our maker so the focus is to stay positive and stay in Formed. Thank you, Orlando. And I know uh, I'm getting ready to hand it back off to Althea, but I just wanted to thank all the three of you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to be here to share your faith, to share uh, a little bit of, of your story as well. Um, I think it is helpful for those who are on the hear those stories and know. I mean, bottom line is, as entrepreneurs, you are the engine of this economy. You are where the job growth comes from. So we thank you very much for taking time to be here and share your story. Althea, back to you. Wow. You know what I thought of when I heard all of your stories? I thought about the power of the story. And uh, today we have the three largest uh, faiths in the world, and they are united by the power of the story story of faith of Father Abraham. And so right now, I'd like to bring on Rabbi Josh Caruso to bring us our final inspirate. Well, actually, I don't even want to say our final inspirational message. I mean, we have been bombarded with uh, encouragement today. And Rabbi Caruso, I'm delighted that you are here he, he has served uh, on the clergy team since 2002 at his temple. He's ordained by the Hebrew Union College, Jewish Institute of Religion in New York, back in 1998, 
In 2011, his efforts led to the formation of the Greater Cleveland Congregations, a coalition of more than 30 diverse faith communities from across the Northeast Ohio area committed to bringing social and racial justice to the forefront. Thank you for all that you're doing, Rabbi. I cannot wait to hear what you're going to share with us. Take it away. Thank you so much. Um, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Loud and clearly. Wonderful. Well, shalom, everybody. Um, and salam and um, all of all greetings, universal greetings to everybody uh, here today. Um, I, I know I'm sounding redundant, but I'm really, I don't usually run in small business circles. Um, unlike my colleagues who presented earlier, I do not um, run a small business, but I have to tell you um, after this gathering, I'm really feeling like I should um, because I've been so inspired um, by everybody's, um, everybody's words and resilience, just remarkable. Um, by the way, my last name is Caruso, which doesn't sound very Jewish. My mom was Jewish and my dad is Italian Catholic, um, ended up becoming a rabbi. So if you didn't hear Goldberg or, you know, whatever, it's it's because um, um, I have those Italian roots. Uh, but by faith, I, I am uh, I'm a Jew. Um, I've been serving this congregation. Yeah, um, we talked about this is my 21, 22nd year now here in Beechwood, Ohio. Um, and I'm just uh, honored to be here today. I wanted to share with you a little story um, and, and by the way, it kind of follows one of our the panelists from the just the previous uh, grouping. Um, and I'm sorry, I forgot her name, but she said, um, I love this. Um, you take one step and then God provides two. I really love that. Um, and I think um, when we when we those of us in the faith business think a lot about um, about the sort of the the balance between praying for God and and giving it up to God and also um, how much we put ourselves, you know, forward and throw up, put ourselves like the steps we need to take. And it's always a question, how much do I need to take? When will God provide? How will God provide? How many steps do I have to give? So, um, so a little story at our local Jewish community center in Beechwood, a suburb of Cleveland, in the aquatic area, there is a small corner of the pool where a swimming teacher instructs little children, young ones, as little as infants, how to swim. As I was doing laps in a different lane in that very same pool, I paused to watch the lesson. I must tell you that I was pretty horrified. Horrified at first as I watched this woman hurl these fairly new humans into four feet high water. Over and over again, the woman flung them into the depths of the shallow end of the pool in what could only have felt like a giant sea to those little ones. I could sense and feel their fear. And to add insult to injury, she proceeded to watch them struggle and flail before saving them in what seemed like the very last moment of their lives. Now, I've heard about this swimming teacher. She is highly regarded and recommended. And importantly, she really teaches these kids to swim. By literally throwing them into the deep end of the pool, they learn to not only survive, they eventually thrive as swimmers. You can imagine that such a practice requires a building of trust between student and teacher. It's like a trust fall. We know the benefits, but we are still unable at times to believe that things are going to be okay. Fear and trust play a, lar play a large part when the ancient Hebrews were fleeing slavery in Egypt. The Torah features the iconic crossing of the Sea of Reeds, the Red Sea, but it is also the story of the, our people who were spiritually stunted due to years and years of slavery. They were burdened with a slave mentality and were in no sense authors of their own lives. What they needed was to discover that they have agency to move ahead. But at the moment, they were paralyzed and they were passive followers. Just like those small babies, the moment was real and they felt unprepared. But the real action of life can only occur when we jump into that deep end of the pool. In one of the more remarkable and unknown parts of our Torah portion, in our Torah, the contextual setting finds the Hebrews chased by Pharaoh and his armies. You kind of know the story. They are closing in um, and all those fast chariots, Pharaoh's chariots are chasing them. The situation appears quite dire as our people, the Hebrews, reach the lip of the Red Sea. The Hebrews panic 
and even Moses panics. A legend says that he went deep into prayer due to his fears, despite outwardly showing bravery. Moses on the outside is the prototypical leader displaying supreme confidence at a moment that demanded calm. And yet the Moses on the inside felt like a frightened child and who could blame him? I wonder how many of us can trace our entrepreneurial visions back to one fearful moment. And by the way, rabbis have those visions too and clergy of all sorts have those visions of, of how do we create something? How do we create a, a, um, a product um, called religious faith, called belief. How do, we, how do we bring that to individuals? How do we vision that for others? And that, that fear seeks in, like what if I'm trying to share about my passion for God? What if it falls short? What, what if it's not enough? These fears are ancient to all of us human beings. These moments loom for us. They present themselves before us. And we find that we can either push ourselves through the struggle or fall down in fear. We've heard so many stories today about those who kind of hit, hit those walls, particularly around the, the pandemic, and yet faced those fears and moved ahead. I'll close with this, this one story here. There was a, another legend that was created in the very moment when Moses, remember Moses was fearfully moved to pray. Outside he was showing strength, but inside he was so nervous, so upset, so anxious, he couldn't move. God even shouts to Moses and says, what are you doing? You need, it's kind of like the implication is you have to move forward. And this, this no-name individual who had hardly been mentioned in the scripture at all, his name was Nachshon. He sprang forward ahead of all the throngs of his people as they're just looking at Moses, waiting for him to do something. But he moved ahead and he walked right into the sea. This sea that was closing in, Pharaoh's closing in on them, feeling like maybe this is the end. And it was that very same moment when the sea split and Moses raised his staff. The sea parted. The lesson. The Torah places tremendous emphasis on human beings taking that first step. God will walk with us, but only in concert with the confidence that we have, the power to confront our fears and believe. No one really should be a passive people. Moses' hesitancy is a cautionary tale that God is a powerful partner, but not always the lead actor in this world, in this life because God exists in the universe, sometimes is not involved in every little bit of our business. But we also learn from Moses about how human we really are. Being brave doesn't preclude one feeling fear. Bravery and courage are often accompanied by legitimate vulnerabilities. It is our task to power, power through the fear, to find something remarkable on the other side of it. Freedom, agency, power, that's what we've heard today. I'm so inspired by all of you. Thank you for letting me share some comments today. Wow. Thank you, Rabbi. I really uh, enjoy that, uh, that particular uh, story from the scriptures uh, about, um, again, the power of the story uh, to face our fears and take that bold step forward. Uh, and that's what entrepreneurs do. And so I'm glad that you had the opportunity to hang around our group, our ecosystem, and be inspired towards uh, entrepreneurship. And I know that you have great partners in the SBA office there in uh, Columbus. And I hope that uh, from here, you all will work together to ensure that uh, people in your faith community and in every community where there's a nexus with you, Rabbi, that uh, we can bring the, the message of who we are, what we do at SBA, uh, to inspire and fuel the stories of others. Because after all, listen, at the end of the day, uh, it is entrepreneurs, small business owners, who um, you know, are providing the jobs that strengthen our communities. They are the ones providing the innovation 
that is moving society forward. We're so grateful for everyone who joined us today on this Small Business Faith Forum third annual. I know and I know that Terry, likewise, we have been inspired to uh, take this forum into the streets uh, and off the screens. So uh, anyone listening, uh, SBA, Columbus District Office, and certainly the South Florida District Office, we are open for business. If you'd like to partner with us, we want to partner with you to bring the message of entrepreneurship to your community. And I hope that you will reach out to us. Uh, you can find us on our website at sba.gov. And then you can drill down to the local offices. And I hope you'll do that. Uh, even if you are in some other community of the United States and not necessarily in South Florida or Columbus, that you'll reach out to SBA. We are here for you. Uh, we are the only agency uh, in the federal government who is hyper-focused and singularly focused on small businesses, their growth, and their opportunity. So thank you again, Terry, for uh, all that you've done to make this event happen. Thank you, Everett Waddell, for your leadership uh, to make this happen. And thank you to all of our participants. We look forward to hearing more excellent stories of your good, good success. Bye, everyone.